my name is Ilya, and I'm the founder of Innovat. And uh, essentially what we do, uh, we help travelers get tax-free digitally. If you ever traveled abroad and you shopped abroad, you've probably completed the paper form for your VAT refund and the process you really hated. So we are trying to change it uh, with the digital process. Uh, it's not as exciting as, as the previous speakers. It includes a lot of information about taxes and the queues in the airports, etc. But I think I'll start with a personal story. And my personal story starts as a professional video gamer. Probably when you think about video games, that's the first picture that comes to your mind, or at least that's what my friends told me. Uh, but I was actually a professional esports player for more than five years, and I performed uh, on tournaments around the world. When you think of a video gamer, you think of a person who sits in front of a PC, but it actually takes a lot of time and effort to, to sit in front of a PC and train for 12 to 14 hours per day. You sit with the same people, you train with them, you have a specific analyst, coach, manager, and essentially it operates as a business where you have to perform on your role, you have to do your best, and then when a tournament comes, all, everything that you prepared throughout the months of your training, you perform on the tournament. This is my last tournament that I have played on. It hosted more than 20,000 people, and the pressure that I've experienced was um, unbelievable. I was shaking, uh, and at, its, at the time I was still uh, 18 years old. So for me, um, I think the pressure of people watching you play and people thinking that you will perform good. <laughs> we didn't, <laughs> by the way. And people thinking that um, you will be the, the, the winning team, that they support you. It actually is both cheering, but also uh, a bit uh, adds on the pressure point. And I think it, I learned a lot uh, being a professional esport player that I've applied in the fintech business that we are building that I want to share with everyone. Um, I think there are many principles that you can uh, relate to. Uh, but I think the ones that we found out during uh, our team foundation especially helps in the early processes of building your company. So I think the first one that I found extremely valuable is team building. I've played with more than uh, 100 professional players together. All of them have their egos and they're very arrogant. But they're players. They train. They train for hours. It's their craft and they're really passionate about it. So you need to work with your teammates and the same goes for the business. When we started hiring engineers, and the best engineers possible, we, we found out that engineers also have an ego. And you need to make sure that they find themselves comfortable, that your team goals are aligned, and that you can work together. Resilience. I think this is super important, because when we were playing professionally, and when you're building a business, you always have ups and downs. It's not like a straight line, and it's not a sprint. It's more of a marathon where you need to build success over time. When I was playing professionally, I built my team that I sold to a large gaming corporation. And it didn't take me a month, a year. It took me five years to build the team, build the brand, and sell it to a large gaming corporation. The same goes when you're playing on a tournament or performing on a business meeting. You need to do your best and analyze what you can do. You can't win everything, but if your win rate is higher than 50%, you're already doing good. So you can improve on that. And then I think there is an interesting topic called meta. I'm not speaking about Facebook here. Um, it's mostly in, the, in gaming. When you think about meta, meta is when you have specific heroes or champions that are extremely uh, strong and that a lot of players are using. Strategies, champions, etc. When you think about businesses, think of COVID. During COVID, you had a huge acceleration of digital businesses. So the meta was for digital businesses, remote work, and now, COVID is kind of over. Uh, we are based in the UK. The UK canceled COVID, and people are back to, uh, to physical meetings. And the last two years, there was a meta of digital work. Now we have a meta of hybrid work. What the meta will be in two years is extremely important so you can predict and build for the future. When we started our business, and we are back to the exciting stuff, um, we started with the idea of being the only digital VAT refund provider for tourists. It was both exciting and a bit uh, nervous because there have never been a digital provider before and we had to work with the governments. So I, I will go through a story, a personal story of Peter uh, to, to, to make you more aware of the whole process if you are familiar. Imagine Peter, he's traveling from Singapore to Europe and he buys presents to his family. When he's going back, he's claiming the VAT. And the VAT is essentially a tax that he can get back on any shopping that Peter creates in, in Europe. But the whole process is horrible. It takes hours. You need to manually fill the forms. 
and then on top of that, you get charged high fees. So we were like, okay, we've seen the digital innovation in fintech, we've seen the Revolut, we've seen the Monzos, the N26 in Europe. Why VAT is still so obsolete? So we were like, let's do a digital process where we innovate and create the first digital VAT refund pro solution, where you simply upload the receipt and get the money back. On the screen, it looks extremely simple, but essentially, when you start build, building the business, you understand that you need to have a lot of stuff ready. We need to work with Ministry of Finances. We need to work with our clients. Our clients are traveling from different parts of the world. It's extremely hard to communicate with them because they want to have local support. You need to essentially perform at your best. And when we started building the business, we saw a lot of similarities with building a professional esports team. We build the team in the way where we complement each other on the skills, and I think that's one of the things that everyone can do to perform better. But then you have a lot of uncertain events, so black swan events, such as COVID. And for us, we started in the perfect time for a travel business, just three months before COVID. Travel died, in the lockdowns no one traveled, and for us it was a really hard time. So what we did is, uh, we looked at, I looked at back at my gaming story, and in the gaming story, when we were down or we were losing, we were always trying to scale. And when we scale, we wait for like, uh, a later part of the game when we can create a comeback situation. The same goes for the business. We waited over COVID, and because of the main three principles that we had, we survived COVID, and we actually um, increased our customer base, and we started to work with larger clients. What we did during COVID, we focused on team. So essentially, when I mentioned Team building, team building in my first slide, it's extremely important to have a super strong team that you can trust. And I think trust is the most important part. We complement each other on skills. If you can complement your founders, your employees, or, or just your friends and colleagues, you will find better synergies. We listen to our customers. Our customers told us that they don't want to have a direct B2C solution, but they want to have a B2B solution. When, when we started speaking with the customers, we quickly understood how we can develop our product, how we can grow. The same goes for gaming. When we listened to our fans on what they want to see, which content they want to, us to create, we created a much higher conversion loop. And then we started looking at the market, and then what our clients said actually supported us. Clients didn't like the current providers. They wanted to use their banks for VT refund services, and then tourists wanted to get VT refund shopping, but not manually. They wanted to get it digitally. So we started working with partners. In the same way, when I was playing professionally, I partnered with a large corporation to help me succeed, to help get the necessary capital and funding. We started working with large organizations. We started working with MasterCard because of their network. We started working with banks, and it led to enterprise contracts. The same way it led when we signed for the large uh, gaming corporation, we actually started winning large international tournaments. So now our service actually pivoted, and we are doing a white label integration to banks instead of a direct B2C application that I showed before. We came to this through speaking with our clients, speaking with our partners, and acting together as a team. And the integration is much simpler, uh, it's much beneficial for the customer, and it's a much um, more um, sleek product. And when we go back to gaming and look at what gaming actually helped and how video games helped me to succeed in building a team, um, there's actually a picture from our first tournament. And what we did there, we were um, in the loser's bracket. So we lost the first uh, best of five. When you play gaming, you have a uh, best of five series. So you need to win three, win three games uh, to, to proceed further. We actually lost the first one, so we went to the loser's bracket. And then from the loser's bracket, we actually climbed to the finals, and we won the finals. And I think there, the main idea is that uh, a lot of previous speakers also said that you should never give up, and you should always try when there is a chance. When we started working on the business, we had to do a lot of cold calls, cold outreaches with a lot of people ignoring us, because we were still a startup. And at that time, you might feel uh, disencouraged, you might feel lost. Uh, the same way we, lo we were lost when we were uh, losing to a professional team, when we were losing a map or losing a game. And I think what helped us a lot is we were acting as a team. We, thought, we, we spoke with each other, we helped each other, and we succeeded together. So the next time when you're playing a video game with a friend online, think of what you can gain, which transferable skill you can gain. Because gaming is a really huge area. And if you think of metaverse, if you think of crypto, gaming was the first industry which was super niche 
but actually brought up these principles. When I started playing in 2010, no one was playing video games, and it was considered to be a nerd thing. And you see now, every brand is trying to go into the metaverse, every brand is trying to bring crypto into the gaming communities, etc. So if you, if you look for niches, you can find the best value there. And I think, um, adding to the speakers before, you should never give up and just do your best.